I would like to title my sharing today as a lifestyle of worship. So a lifestyle of worship. We start every service, you come to church, we start with worship. There is a session called worship time where we play the music, where we sing the song. And that should not be our definition of worship. Singing the song, playing the music should not be the definition of worship. So today we're going to talk about a lifestyle that is very, very different from what we have been seeing in the social medias for a few years from now on. All right, the next part, I'm gonna, um, this, these are the things that I'm going to cover today. Uh, I'm going to read a Bible verse um, to point out where we talk about worshiping God. And I'm going to talk about the jealous God, God being very, very jealous. And I'm going to talk about worship being a lifestyle. And we will have a short discussion, more like a reflection time instead of a discussion. So that will be uh, our preview. Okay, Exodus chapter 2, oh, sorry, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 to 3. Can we read together? One, two, three. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Okay, next. Four to five. Continue. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Did God say he is jealous? Yes. God has jealousy somehow, some way. We're going to talk about that, all right? So this is obviously one of the first, oh, so not even one. It is, it is the first commandment. So one day God would be thinking, I have to give these people law and commandment so that they live properly. And you know what is the first thing he thought? You shall only worship me. You shall not have other idols. That is the first thought he has. That is number one. It's not number four, number five, number six. The first thought in God's mind when he think about his people is, these people should worship me and only me. Amen? These people should respect their parents, correct? Should not kill other, should not murder other people, which is correct. So many things to do. But the first thing they should do here is they should worship me. And I don't want to share this with other people. God said, I don't want to share this with so many other things. Number, thing, number one thing, they should worship me and me alone. For I am a jealous God. So that's the first thought. Let's move on. Jealous God. So I will let start with what is a God? What makes God God? How do we define God? There are so many different types of God. We only have one. In fact, we're very poor in that case. We only have one God. There are Hindu. Hinduism has about 3,000 different gods. Buddhism has so many gods and more are coming, you know, to be continued. Yeah. They have new gods. What is a God? What makes God a God? That's the first question. So ask yourself, Ask yourself, what is God? Number two, who is the God of the Bible? What did the Bible say about who God is? What make our God, the God of the Bible, different from the so many other gods that we've been talking about? If you get that answer, you will know why He deserves all your worship and your praise. Amen? If you don't know the difference between your God and their gods, of course, your mind will be divided. Of course, your heart will be divided. But it is very important that you know why your God is different from so many other gods. And the third one, why is God jealous? This is a very good question. God said, I am a jealous God. 
So the question is, why is God jealous? I thought jealousy is supposed to be a bad thing. Is it really? Why is God jealous? And how to put God as God? I've been moving on to the next one. Is there anyone is in the media room, please? Okay, I have posed four questions. Number one, what is a God? Number two, who is the God of the Bible? Number three, why is God jealous? And number four, how do we put God as a God? And we will answer them one after one. So, oh yeah, we are so far from what I've been hoping. What is a God? What is a God? In definition, in definition, God is the highest value in the hierarchy of values. This is a secular definition in ways that people understand God, not literally from the Bible, of course. This is how people define what God is. It is the highest value, it is the highest value in the hierarchy of values. So whatever you think is important, if you list them down, right? Education, money, health, family, relationship, if you list them down and then you put what is most important at the top, that is your God. If you list down everything that you, you think is important in your life, the number one thing that, is, that you put at the top is your God. That is a secular definition. How did the Bible describe God? Who is the God of the Bible? Moses asked the same question. When he heard the sound in the burning bush, Moses wanted to know what that is or who that is. And you know what is the answer? I am who I am. I am who I am. There is no one to compare. Amen? There is no one to compare. God is I am. That also means everything that exists. When everything, everyone refers the highest standard that they see, it is I am. The great I am it is. Amen? So who is the God of the Bible? I am who I am. So he is the creator of the heaven and the earth and he sustained everything that is good. He just did not create heaven and earth. He sustained everything that is good. So again, you think about everything that is good, the top one would be God. You, you list down everything that has beauty, you know. You list down everyone that you know that are beautiful. You list down every painting that you think is beautiful. The number one standard would be God. Everything that is considered good, kindness. If you list down everybody who is kind to you, the number one should be God. He sustained every good thing. That is the Bible. That is the God that we see in the Bible. The next one is, why is God jealous? Especially for the young ones here, I would like to define what is jealousy. There are two types of jealousy. The first type of jealousy is when someone becomes successful, when someone is doing well, you are not happy. You thought, that person doesn't even try hard. That person doesn't deserve that. I deserve that more. You are jealous of those people. That is the first definition of jealousy. And obviously, it is a terrible idea. You celebrate when people are successful. You help them when they fail. You encourage them. There is no room for jealousy. That type of jealousy. Now, this is the type of jealousy that God has. Cosmetic products. That's a lifestyle. We have been very influenced with social media, personally myself as well. I've been, I've been very influenced with social media and the things that I see. And celebrities, they show us their lifestyle and sometimes we get jealous. Wow, they have very good life. They are very fortunate, lots of money. Right? 
You watch Mr. Beast, right? He gave away 10,000 to a random person. You just wish that you were that person. That type of lifestyle, man. You just spend everything you want. So what lifestyle should we pick? There are so many versions. The good ones, the bad ones. What should we pick? A lifestyle of worship, my brother and my sister. So, when you come to church, what should your lifestyle be? Your church life. We call it the church life. How you behave, the things that you do at church, the people that you hang out with church, that is your church life. How should it look like? Only serve God. If you come to church to serve, if you come to church to serve, serve God. Don't serve pastor, son name. Don't serve Xialian. Don't, don't think that you are doing for Xialian when you're leading worship. You know, when you're doing backup singing. When you're doing something in church, don't think that you are doing for pastor son name. Where is your mindset? I'm doing this for God. I come to church. It is exactly true we have leaders. But your idea and your thinking should go beyond your leaders. As I said, as you sing the song, God should be number one. As you clean the room, as you pick up the room, that is worship. As long as you do it with the love of God. Amen? As you arrange the chairs, I don't know who did this to, this afternoon, this evening, sorry. As you arrange the chairs, if you're doing this with the love of God, this is worship. If you're cleaning the kitchen and you're doing it the love of God, that is worship, my friend. That is worship. Just serve God. If you serve people, you will be disappointed. If you serve your leaders, you'll be disappointed. Serve God. Look at God. Worship and fellowship. Focus on worship and fellowship when you come to church. Worship God with all your might, with all your strength. And then another part is your fellow friends who come to the church. Do you greet them yet? How can one claim to love God if he doesn't love a brother that he can see? You can't love an invisible God if you fail to love a visible brother. John said, Yes, you worship the Lord. On the other hand, fellowship. Have you greet your people nicely? Of course, not everybody. You don't have time for that. Certain people, the people that you are close to, have you put on a smile? Seek the lost soul. The church, the church is not just the church is not just to refill your spiritual strength. If you can refill your spiritual energy, your strength, it is very good. If you can hear the word of God and you feel strengthened in your spiritual life and you do corrections, it is very, very, very good. But the church, the great commandment is go and make disciples. If you are part of the church, you bear the same commandment in you. You bear the same commission in you to go make disciples, search for the lost souls. Invite your friends to church. Invite your friends to church. Sometimes they might say, oh no, I'm not free. Wait for them. Call them another time. Call them another time. Make some appointment so that it's not just church. Plan something so that you can go church straight away with your friend. That's easier, a little bit easier. Some of you are laughing because that's what I did. You're right? These people sitting here. <laughs> okay. Your personal life. Let's move on to the personal life. Okay, number one, talk to God. Talk to God. This is how we worship the Lord. And how do we talk to God? Sunday school students, how do we talk to God? Pray. Oh yes, that's Kan Kan. Wow, give you a big round of applause. I didn't see him. Yes. Pray. 
grow has courage to answer. Pray to God. Talk to God. And very, very importantly also, listen to His voice. Don't just tell God what you want, blah, 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 and then shut down. You know, some people make phone calls like that. They call you, they tell you everything they want, and then they just hang up. My sister likes to do that. Not anymore, my sister Mang Nu. She likes to do that a lot last time. Listen to his voice. As you talk to God, listen to his reply. And usually his word is the Bible. It will give you instruction. The Bible is good for instruction, correction. Okay, next one is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus went up to heaven, the promise was not wealth, not health. The promise wasn't victory and courage. The promise was the Holy Spirit. Have you been walking with the Holy Spirit? Jesus is not with us physically, but He has sent the Holy Spirit. Have some fellowship with the Holy Spirit, my friend. The next one, your public life. How should a lifestyle of worship be seen in a public life? Number one, selfless behaviors. Don't be too selfish. If you keep serving yourself, if you keep thinking for yourself only, that is not a very worship style. Jesus said, I come to serve and not to be served. That is the mentality of Christ. He is not there to be served. He is not self-centered. He is open. He is the gate. Think for other people. That is the mindset of Christ, my brothers and sisters. Bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That is the next one. In public place, people should see the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Can we say together? One, two, three. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These things should come out in public life. These things should come up in the public life. It is supposed to be a fruit to be seen and to be tasted so that people may see the goodness of God, so that God may be glorified. Be the salt and light to the world. Jesus was on the mount when he gave this sermon. You are like salt. Salt has saltiness which magnifies the taste of the dish that it is in. But if the salt lost the tastiness, the saltiness, then it is trodden on the, on the street. It lost its value. My brother and sisters, if you're a Christian, and you haven't shown the fruits of the Spirit, and if, if, if you haven't been salty enough to the world, I think we have to check ourselves. Have we still have our values in us? Let us be the light that shines the goodness and the grace of Christ. Let us withhold criticism. Let us withhold criticism, gossips, discouragements. Let us speak more of grace and mercy. If you want to correct a person, talk to them personally and privately. Other than that, whatever comes out from your word about another person should be positive, my friend. It should be positive. Amen? So be the salt and the light. And what about your work life? How many of you have worked today? Not today. How many of you are going to work every day? Hello, hello, she there to tell all the time, baby, no? Okay. So work life, number one, work as if you are working for God. This is Paul's statement. Paul was talking about slaves and masters. I think we can interpret it as bosses and workers. Workers, work as if you are working for the Lord. Work as if 
you are working for the Lord. It's, it's very difficult sometimes. It's very difficult, especially when you have disagreement with your boss. Especially when you have disagreement with your supervisor, your manager. It's very, very difficult to be productive, to keep on focusing. But you know what? We are not called to live an easy life. Be kind and gentle. Be kind and gentle. These are parts of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And I think we need this a lot in our workplace. Being kind, being gentle. Even to the ones that have done wrong to us. We are taught to love our enemies. We are taught by Christ to love our enemies. And if we can't love our co-workers, if we can't love the people that have done wrong to us, we have to renew what His Word means to us. Friendly and inclusive. You know, when I think about worship as a lifestyle, I don't need to think about so many people. When I think about worship as a lifestyle, I think of Jesus. Jesus lived His whole life as a, as a worship. So if you, if, you, if you study the life of Christ, he was friendly and inclusive. Tax collectors, never mind, follow me. Beggars, all right. You are sick, all right. Nobody loves you, all right. Zacchaeus, you are short, all right. Short people, don't be sad. Jesus is friendly and inclusive to everybody. You know, sometimes we are so entitled with our denominations. We are full gospel, only full. Your seven day Adventist, damn one side. UPC, one side. Sometimes our denominations become boundaries and barriers to spread the word of God. Be more inclusive, be more open. Of course, you have your core belief that is totally correct. But to share the word of God, sometimes we need to be more open minded. Sometimes we need to have open heart that reach people from the further side. And family life, a little bit of family life, yeah? Oh, I forgot, that was so small. God-fearing family. Our family, number one, you have brothers and sisters, train them to fear God. Train them to respect God. That is part of you and your parents' duty, especially your younger brothers and sisters. Part of you and your parents' duty is to lead the little ones to fear the God, to, to respect God. And secondly, of course, honor your parents. Youth, young people, your parents' ideas are outdated, I understand. Sometimes they don't understand your TikTok and they don't understand that you cannot pause your online game. Right? Your parents don't understand that you can't pause that online game. It's online. Their thinking, their ideologies may be outdated. But the Word of God said, honor your parents. Is there a way that you can make them understand? Have you ever put effort to try to explain? Sometimes I talk to my students, not these people, don't go and bother them. Other students, and then I was like, can you please come to school now? And then they ask their parents. They are supposed to ask their parents, sorry. They are supposed to ask their parents. But they said, no, I don't think my mom would believe me. They don't even try to explain yet. Last time, my mom didn't allow me to go at this time. There is no explanation given yet. Sometimes we young people are sick and tired of explaining everything to our parents. But honor your parents still in the Bible. Okay? Just because you're tired doesn't mean it's gone. Just because age has changed and time has gone on doesn't mean the Bible has changed. Honor your parents and it comes with a promise, you will be prosper and you will be healthy in this world. Forgive and love. You may be wondering why I put forgiveness and love in a family situation. Should it, shouldn't it be a workplace? Yes. Shouldn't it be in the church? Yes. But most importantly, man, when your family member hurt you, very, very, very hard to forgive. Young ones, you may not understand. 
as you grow older, it's much harder to forgive a family member than to forgive other people. So forgiveness, focus on forgiveness and love in family. Whatever misunderstanding, whatever problem that you guys are facing, love, forgiveness, love, forgiveness. Family is a replication of the kingdom of God. Family should be a replication of the, the kingdom of God. When we get to the kingdom of God, Christ will be the, the head. Just like that, in family, the father is the head. So a family is a replication, a small application of the kingdom of God. And you have a, a happy family that is called the priest, that is called the fall taste of heaven. You fall taste heaven. You're not in heaven yet, but you already feel the peace and the happiness of heaven if you have a healthy and good family. So walk in your family life. Have I been a good son? Have I been a good daughter? Have I been a good parent? Let us live worship as lifestyle, not just as singing. I would like to invite the worship team. And while they are coming up, I have four questions. As you go back, of course, this sounds like a class, but I think these are important questions. The first one is, what has been an idol that you often put before God? God said, do not put it. Ask yourself that question. What has been an idol that I have always put it above God? Please ask yourself. The second one, what does worship mean to you? I think I have given you enough answers today. What does worship mean to you? The answer is mine. We may have similar answer, which I will be glad, but it might be different to you. So what does worship mean to you? How do you think a lifestyle of, why do you think a lifestyle of worship is important? Why? Why must we live a worship of lifestyle? To shine the light, to be the salt of this world. When you feel weak in your spiritual life, when you feel attacked by the devil, who can you turn to for help? We have leaders. We have pastors. If you need help, they are there for you. That's literally their job. So feel free to approach your leaders. Tell them your problem. Tell them your problem. Che ask them to check on you. I've been very neglecting in my prayer life. I am very lazy to pray. Please check on me every day at 9 p.m. whether I have prayed or not. It's a simple request, but it goes very far. If you need help with reading the Bible, please remind me, Pastor, please remind me to read my Bible every day at 8 a.m. We have pastors, leaders. Of course, it doesn't have to be these people in your own church when you go back. Please approach them, ask help from them. Shall we all rise to sing Heart of Worship?